Hey, this is Brett Tapke. We're back here again at SES San Jose, and joining us, Lee Oden from uh, Top Rank Marketing. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks, uh, Brett. Uh, no stranger to our crowd at all, Lee. Uh, big fan. Folks, big folks fan. know you. Uh, conference wonk. In fact, you were just recently named to the SES uh, Advisory Board. Yeah, so yeah, we, that was pretty cool. We were quite disappointed we didn't get to you first. And, <laughs> you know, it was like, we, we heard about it and Joe comes up, Brett, how come we didn't get Lee on our <laughs> advisory board groups? So, oh, well. Congratulations Thank on you. that. So Thank you. You had a lot of duties and responsibilities with that? Or, um, I, they showed me where the toilet was there and gave go. me a brush and <laughs> I said, well, you know, no, um, no, no, not yeah. at all. Um, you know, I get to do things like I just got done doing a panel uh, for the Click Z track um, on real-time marketing, and it was cool because it had the tech, uh, Technorati CEO, a COO of Mebo, mm -hmm. and they showed some really cool stuff. What they're doing with Mebo is amazing, yeah. and um, the uh, a vice president from YouTube, and and as well as a fellow from Dell who set up all their Twitter stuff. And so we got to talk about you know the advantages, challenges, and that sort of thing right. of marketing in real time, which really translates into social media. Right. Um, speaking of Twitter and marketing, <clears throat> we've been studying through a company called Clout recently, uh, mm -hmm. Clout Scores. Did you know you're the highest ranked Clout Score probably at this conference? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah on Twitter. No, on I've Twitter, checked out Clout have... a couple of times, yeah. and I have... Higher than Matt Cutts, higher than a <laughs> lot of people here. It was, oh. it was like real informative to, to so. Well, here, I'm getting my wallet off. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we just <laughs> previously interviewed uh, Joe Fernandez from uh, Clout. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, earlier today. yeah I, I, I recently traded some emails with him because I want to check, check out Cloud a little mm -hmm. more in depth because uh, mm -hmm. I heard about it and uh, took an early look at it and was like, well, you know, Whatever, mm -hmm. and then I found it by accident because someone else was using it, and I thought, "Whoa, this is actually kind of cool." Yeah. So I'm looking forward to checking it out a little more in depth. Well, I just found it really interesting, and you know, it's a real reflection of the type of quality work you've been doing on Twitter because you have just knocked it out of the park <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, it it's been productive, um, and I think what's important for people that want to use Twitter for reaching whatever objective they have is to learn how to be efficient with it as soon as possible because it can be a big time suck. <laughs> yeah. um, and so there's things you can automate, there's things you can do manually, um, but there's definitely a, a, you know, gotta be an emphasis on quality and understand you know, the intent and who you're trying to reach. You know, because if you're just dropping links, if you're just retweeting, yeah. that's it. Right. Uh, if you're not at replying to people, if you're only uh, doing this, yeah. then you know, people aren't interested in that. Right. So what, what's kind of the buzz these days in SEO and PR? You get around kind of both mm -hmm. spaces, both in the PR and the... Yeah, well, you know, I think uh, folks in the PR industry are concerned about their future mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because there's so much direct-to-consumer, uh, you know, media, you know, citizen journalism, um, social channels that are news distribution direct-to-consumer or consumers are generating the media. If um, a company can have a blog and publish news that's easily discovered by, you know, and get republished by the media, what do they need a PR firm for? Here's a practical example. Our own efforts uh, for media relations, which is pitching to journalists to get them to write about you. Uh, we don't employ any PR efforts of any kind, yet we average 30 mainstream media on and offline and blog pickups every month unsolicited. So that means you know, various publications in our industry, our newspapers, regional newspapers. I mean, this isn't Wall Street Journal and right, New York right. Times stuff necessarily, but industry niche too. Yeah, it's very, and which is good. That's because that's who we're trying to reach. I don't need to be in USA Today, right. and uh, or Newsweek, or it's like some other people need to be. So, um, what's important is that we're reaching who's looking for the kinds of services that we have to offer. And um, I don't know. It, 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 we found out that it equates to about ten thousand dollars a month of a retainer that we would have to pay a PR firm to research those people, pitch, you know, craft a strategy and a pitch, right. and execute on that, measure it, and report back. Um, all because we write one blog post a day at toprankblog.com, and it's not just me, Adam Singer, right. who I've recently hired, has been doing a bang-up job. Um, he's a digital marketing guy, digital marketing and PR guy, perfect fit for our company and for our clients. and. Um, People that are passionate, their passion comes through in their writing, you know, and, and that helps it travel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, you, you mentioned 
PR and Twitter and uh, buying buying PR. What do you? What's your take on uh, paper tweet or uh, sponsored conversations? Uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, so, if it can give value and be transparent about where it's coming from, I think it's doable. I mean. Like, as a recipient of this content, would you really care? If you get value out of it, do you really care that one person paid another right. for that conversation or content sourcing to occur? I mean, as a recipient, if you can take that to the bank or get value out of it, then do you really care? But when it's not that crystal clear, uh, and there are endorsements without transparency and so on and so forth, then, then it gets to be a bit of an issue. And I think I, just this morning, um, there's a entity, it's like, I don't know what the nomenclature is, it's a government entity that's making a recommendation to Congress about right. paid uh, or endorsements or free products FTC. for bloggers. Yeah, and it's, it's a group that's advising the FTC, yeah. and that just got announced today, and it's like, wow, you know, that's going to have an impact. I mean, when we get into the legal issue, a disclosure, right. from a disclosure standpoint, that, that affects the answer to mm -hmm. your question. Appreciate the time, Lee. We're out of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thanks, Thanks Lee. Brad. Appreciate it.